Budgeting for a movie isn't really just budgeting. Budgeting is actually taking the script, making some revisions, getting the format in line, which should take a little bit, then getting a script into a scheduling program, breaking out all the scenes, then scheduling it itself after the scenes are broken out in continuity order. And once you're in the budgeting program, now that you've done your schedule and completely broken out all the details of the movie, now you are in a position to really competently do a budget for a movie. Otherwise, it's really kind of guesswork. So in Final Draft, even if you're not a writer, you should be very familiar with all its tools. Really play around with it and get to love it because you're going to be working in this tool a lot. And if you're not a master at this tool, you're going to make errors and then distribute those errors to the crew. So it's really important that you're as good as the writer actually better than the writer with all the little tools because they have to get the concept on the page you have to get the details out to everybody else. I'm going to show you a few features in Final Draft that you're going to need to know but I obviously can't show you them all and I certainly can't show you them in detail. I'm going to rush through them and um, I'm hoping that you are encouraged to read the manual and really figure out these features because this is just scratching the surface and it's certainly incomplete. So in no particular order, I'd mentioned that the margins could change. You should look at the document menu and just notice how in the page layout, there's a tab called margins. So by opening up a clean document that Final Draft has as a generic one in its program, you can see what the standard should be and what maybe the writer might have done uh, inadvertently or inadvertently. Right next to margins is an area called options. And in there, there's a line spacing detail. And this is actually a way to cheat whether or not a script is going to grow. There's literally different settings, tight, normal, loose, of how the script spacing is going to go. So you should check those out, look out for those. The title page, which is under the documents menu, is going to tell you a lot of things about the script and the nature of where it is at this moment when you're reading it. Revision numbers are going to be on there. The screenplay is going to be locked. But based on that locked script, there's going to be additional revisions and no one's going to pass out 100 new pages every time there's you know a change on page 7. So the cover page ends up being a little log of all the changes that happen on each date. Of course, there could be a lot of changes, so it does make sense to constantly have a new revision every day. Sometimes we'll just send it out after a week of changes, if it doesn't affect anybody, but it's all situational, of course. In the Documents menu, there's also a menu that I use a lot more than I think anyone else I've ever met, because I find it very helpful. It's called Smart Type. And what you do is it shows you all the characters in a list, all your locations in a list, all your scenes in a list. And when you're viewing it, you want to hit rebuild so that it's current because it's sort of a cache of all the characters that have been typed into the screenplay. So after you hit rebuild and then alphabetize, if you see extraneous characters that are there, it's time for you to figure out who that character is or talk to the writer. For example, if you have a character named Adam and then you have uh, someone named Mr. Smith on another page, and then you have Adam Smith and it turns out to be the same guy, that's going to show up as three different characters. So it's really important to go through the script and really clean it up in this way. Just make it really consistent and get rid of it. It's simpler. The character's name is Adam. If later in the script you have a character who walks into a scene and he's called Man and then he reappears again later and he's actually got a name, again, that's going to be multiple characters. That's not going to help you break it down. It's also going to cause confusion on the set. And production can get really hectic, so of course, if you think you can just simply tell people, hey, this character, man, is also a police officer, well, after 40 years hear it and they're tired, they're certainly not going to remember, but it's your job to simplify these things before it even gets to them. Locations is the same way. If you have an office building and then you call it accounting firm and it's all the same location, when you get time to start doing your budget, you're just going to create confusion for yourself because now you have three different sets when really it's the same thing. A lot of times you have to talk to the writer or director to confirm whether or not these are different locations or they are indeed the same place. And if you have a question about it, other people will. And if you don't have a question about it, other people might. So you still should make sure that it's clear and that it's only referred to in one way. So really learn to use that smart type menu because that's really going to help you even though it's not a common practice. I think you're going to find that it's really going to help you as you go forward. Remember, everything you're trying to do here has to be simple and concise, but complete at the same time. Okay, so in the Tools menu, you want to look at a feature called Format Assistant. That's going to help you clean up some of the data. Uh, it's a little bit buggy, so once it points out the problems with the script, you'll probably want to fix them manually. They're going to show you when the script has extra spaces, or maybe a character talks twice in a row, and 
things like that. It's going to point them out and, and help you find problems. It's, it's very helpful, but again, you may not want to use the actual feature to actually do the correction, do it yourself. Uh, below there, there's a feature called Script Compare. So if you have two different versions of the script, you can put them side by side, kind of uh, open up one and, and have it look at the other and highlight the changes. Unfortunately, uh, the current version of Final Draft does highlight the entire paragraph with this, even the slightest change. Next, and probably the most important, is the production menu. Production menu is where you can assign scene numbers, and you'll have to play around with that feature and really see how it works. But when, by going through some of the other things like smart type and uh, format assistant, you're going to make sure that every time you have a slug line, every time you have a scene heading like interior, restaurant, night, that's a really important piece of information because Final Draft is going to assume that you've tagged that as a scene heading. And if you didn't, it's not going to give it a number. And if you tag something else that wasn't a scene heading, Final Draft is going to give that a scene number. So it's really important that you make sure that you are using your headings properly and that the writer didn't just hit space, 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 or tab, tab, tab to make things look like they're formatted when they're really not. I find that when I use the scene number script, I'll do a first round where I'll apply the scene numbers, I'll continue through the entire process, and then I'll hit renumber again and renumber again and renumber again. And of course, this is before anyone sees it. By doing the renumbering, the scene numbers will help me identify what areas are properly tagged as a scene heading and which ones are not because they have a number right next to them, so they're easy to identify. A little further, there's other important features like omit scene, because technically when you delete a scene, you're not actually supposed to delete the scene physically and make scene 23 just completely go away, whereas the script goes from scene 22 to 24. So omit scene is actually supposed to handle that for you. It just hides it but shows the number 23 only, for example. Below that is a feature called revisions. Um, very detailed, important area. You really have to read the manual for this one. Um, but this will actually help by creating little marks anytime there's a change in any particular scene or paragraph or anywhere in the script it'll create like a little asterisk to the right of the script and that's how people when they get their changes they can know what's changing the script from one ver version to the next so it's important they use that feature but it also needs to be used correctly so really experiment with that and learn how to use it because it's important again everything you do is going to trickle down Revisions, of course, should be made mostly by one person who's in charge of the script, which, in my opinion, should be someone on the production team because they're going to be very mindful of the scene numbers. Whenever I get changes from a writer, I take those changes and then I manually put them into the script because I need to make sure that things don't get off. Which brings us to the next important thing called locked pages. So if you have a script and you're extending a scene, say page 51, now is going to have an extra page in length, what's going to happen to 52 and onward? Are they going to push down? Well, absolutely not, because then everybody has to get a brand new script. It's not good for the earth. It's certainly not good for distribution. So what we're going to do is we're going to lock the script so that if you have an addition to page 51, it's actually going to be 51A, and that A page is going to roll down. So in other words, uh, insert pages are going to be a, B, C, D, E onward. And C numbers are the same way. You could have scene 27 and 28, and between there you need to add another scene. So the new scene is going to be 27A. Or, in some instances, you'll have a scene that takes place inside and outside of, of a location, for example, and you'll need to cut that up. And the writer might not have written it as such that there are two different scenes. And they may not seem like different scenes, but really they are because you might shoot one in the day, one in the night, but you're certainly going to have a completely different lighting setup and it's really going to feel like another location. So it's important that interior and exterior are split up. You should also take a look at the format menu where it lists the elements where margins might have been changed. And you also want to look at the print menu where you have options to print revised pages, include the title page, not include it. Uh, print revisions with color, and so on and so forth, or just subsets of pages.